Yeah, we're looking at um, the trial balance now. It's on page 96 in your workbook. And I'm um, first quickly, before I go into any actual exercises, just going to talk through kind of an introduction to the trial balance. So where does it fit into the whole process? Um, we know that we have transactions which are recorded on source documents. From those source documents, we draw up the cash receipts journal and the cash payments journal. Then we post to the general ledger and then the trial balance comes next in the whole process. So it's really just a case of taking the final balances and totals from the general ledger and putting them in a specific format. So this is what a trial balance looks like in page 96 on your workbook. Um, it's basically a list of accounts, which you can see in the left hand column there. It's just a list of accounts in the balance sheet and nominal account sections. Um, just notice this heading here says nominal account section. You can just say, say nominal section, but it's exactly the same two sections you have in your general ledger. And it's exactly the same order that you would have the accounts in your general ledger. Then you have the folio numbers, just the B1, B2, N1, N2, etc., as we've seen in the general ledger. And then you just put um, your final balances or totals into either the debit or credit column. So it's really not a hugely difficult thing to do, but let's just go through and see exactly what we need to do. So um, I've explained the first three bullet points. Um, the fourth one will become a bit more obvious at the end of it. Um, and when we're actually doing examples, but once you've finished, if you add up the totals, everything in the debit column, everything in the credit column, all the way down to the bottom, what's on the two sides must be equal. So those two over there must be absolutely equal. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just try and relate this to one of the general ledger exercises. I'm not going to do the whole trial balance from that, but just try and give you an idea as to where this comes from. So we're just looking at the general layout of the trial balance for now. I'm just going to make this a tad bigger so it's easier to kind of read. Uh, maybe you're using your phone or something pretty small. Who knows? Okay, so the general layout of the trial balance. First of all, you have the name of the business, and then you put the end of the month's date in. So it's done at the end of the month or the end of the financial year. So if I go to this general ledger exercise of exercise four, which doesn't actually relate to what is in the workbook, but I'm just using it as an example. Okay, you can see the business's name there is Weinberg Traders at the top. And you can see here we were doing the general ledger for March, 2020 March. Okay, so what I was saying, just if we look at the kind of format of the trial balance, you would put the name of the business here. So you'd put Weinberg Traders. You know what's happening? It's a text box that somebody's got in there. And then you would have on, and then you would have the end of the month's date. Okay, so let's just get rid of that. Okay, text box as well. I didn't realize it was set up like this. I'll cut that away. And I said too, it was March we were looking at. So you just put the end of the month date, 31 March 2020. So the heading, trial balance of the business's name. Put that in bold. So we kind of remember, emphasize that. And then it'll be on the last day of the month. So notice what I've got there. I've got the day, the month, and the year. So it's the actual date of the last day of the month. Okay, now... In our balance sheet account section, we would have the normal order we find in the general ledger. So at the beginning of the general ledger section, we had the particular order. It's exactly the same order. Okay, so we would have capital. Um, so if I just go to my example over here, um, this was exercise four of the general ledger. As I said, if we go and look at our capital account, you can see your final um, total over there or final balance is 350,000 on the credit side. So you take whatever your final total is, 350,000 on the credit side, and you would then go to your trial balance and you would put in 350,000 on the credit side. I just wanna make that right justified. It's just gonna look a little bit better. Okay, so whatever your account is, your final balance, you just go and record there. So it was on the credit side in the general ledger. Final total, final balance was 350,000. So it went to the credit column in the trial balance. Drawings, well, we've only got 200 there on the debit side. So that's going to be the final balance of our drawings account. 
So I'm just going to go there and I'm going to put on the debit side 200 for drawings. Okay, so if I go to my, just using this as the example, land and buildings was 178,000 on the debit side. So that's what's going to go into the trial balance in the debit column. So it's going to be 178. And I would just continue through the general ledger and I would just put all the final balances or totals in like that. So um, if you've got a general ledger and you're working from it, great, that's not too tricky. Okay, now um, this general ledger example obviously didn't have every single ledger account you can get. So I'm just going to go back here and just put some X's in and say, Okay, vehicles, we would always find that has a debit balance. And there's a way you can remember that. So you would put that on the debit side and equipment. Now, the reason I know that is that these three over here, land and buildings, vehicles and equipment, they're all fixed assets. So they behave in the same way. So they would have all debit amounts over there, debit balances. And the same applies to um, all our current assets. So we've got our current assets over there. Trading stock, debtors control, bank, cash flow, petty cash. And you can actually see in this ledger example here, we did have trading stock and bank. And you can see it's a debit of 7,600, a debit of 162,923. So current assets, all assets, in fact, will have debit balances. Petty cash, a debit of 600. Okay, I'm just going back here. I'm just going to be putting X's in. Um, so all these assets would have. Debits over there, um, so cash flow, petty cash. Fixed deposit is an investment, but it actually is an asset as well because um, it's money in the bank, like in your normal bank account. It's just in for a fixed amount of time at a fixed interest rate. Liability, so credit is control. It's people to whom you owe money. It's a liability. So it will have a credit balance and a loan you owe money to the bank in this case, to FNB over there for that loan, so it has a credit. So basically the credits over there in the balance sheet section, capital, that's money the owner has put into the business. Creditors control and loan, that's borrowed money. So it's also money that's gone into the business, but it's been borrowed. So that's own capital, and that's a little bit like borrowed capital if you think of it over there. So the owner's own money they put into the business, money that the owner borrowed. And this is pretty much what the owner did with the money. So they bought a whole lot of assets, land and buildings, vehicles, equipment, stock, etc. They also um, put some money in the bank or in their till for cash float. And they also took some money out of the business, the 200 for drawings. Okay, I'm just going to go back over there um, and just put X's in just so it kind of looks consistent. Um, The easy way of remembering this is capital will have a credit balance. Drawings is the opposite, so it has a debit. All assets have debits. All liabilities have credits. So I'm just going to go to my little summary at the end here. I just said capital will be a credit. It helps to remember this. Drawings is the opposite, so it has a debit. Yeah, all assets will be debit balances and all liabilities will be credit balances. Okay, then I'm going to, so I've done the balance sheet section over there. And it's a good idea to remember which have debit and which have credit balances. So that little summary I've got in the last page is going to be pretty useful. Okay, then we've got our nominal account section over there, or just the nominal section as we normally call it, which is absolutely fine. If I go back to my example over here, exercise four of the general ledger, you can see the incomes. There we had current income and rent income, both have credits. So incomes over there, things like current income and rent income will all be credits. Okay, so. And then all of our expenses, yes, I know I've left out a couple of things there. All of our expenses, if you look here in the blue, wages, stationery, insurance, telephone, all have debits over there. So normally you'll have a whole bunch of expenses, so they're all going to have debits over there. And you can have lots and lots of them, it just depends on the particular exercise or 
the particular business you're running in real life. I left two out. Um, trading businesses are not examinable in grade eight anymore, but um, yeah, sales would be an income because it's money you're receiving from goods you sold. So that would be a credit. Cost of sales is an expense because it's what you paid to buy uh, the goods that you resold. So that would be a debit as well. So we will really deal with those incomes and expenses over there. But the bottom line is incomes, credits, and expenses debit. We can see that if you go back and look at any of the general ledger exercises you've done. So I can set expenses will be debit and incomes will be credited. And try and remember that this is incredibly useful to remember when you're doing a trial balance. So you don't have, sometimes you get one where you haven't actually done the general ledger. So capital will be a credit along with any liabilities and incomes. And then um, drawings will be a debit along with any assets and expenses. So you normally get lots and lots of debits because you have a number of assets and a, a number of expenses as well. Okay, so back up to the trial balance over here. So you would go and put all your balances and totals in. So where I've got the X's, you would have actual figures. And then what you would do at the very end is you would go and total up both sides. I'm not going to put the whole thing in, but I guess it doesn't really matter. So you would total the debit column, whatever that total is, normally quite a big number. Total the credit column. The important thing is you would need to get exactly the same totals over there. So those would have to be exactly the same. It's called a trial balance. And this is to actually show that your debits are equal to your credits. Um, and that's something we've spoken about in class before. Your debits and credits have to be equal. And this is a way of just checking that they're equal before you go any further in the process. You can actually just check that everything does balance for now. So yeah, that was a uh, quick introduction to the trial balance. And we will now go into looking at some examples, some actual exercises. But the summary over here, um, as I said, is pretty useful because um, knowing whether something is debited or credited is really, really important when you come to doing the exercises. Okay, so I think that's the end of this particular video.